it's now early springtime and in the workshop today I've got something a little unusual this is a Japanese larch that I bought from uh, a collection last year and it's got quite an interesting history originally this was just two small trees that were put onto this piece of tufa rock back in the very late 70s or early 1980s and well that's where it's been ever since so as you can see it's been planted on this uh, piece of slab and because tufa rock is very soft you can see the roots have actually grown into the rock and that is all the soil that this tree uh, actually has you can see there's not much on there at all and this tree's not been repotted in any way shape or form since the early 1980s it's obviously grown a lot since then it's developed nicely but it's uh, obviously become very weak Generally the way I like to work with trees like this when I get them I will sit on them for a year, allow them to grow, settle in and then I know what I've got. And when we get up into the branches of this tree you won't be able to see it very well. But there's been obviously a lot of dieback because it's been neglected, the old gentleman that I got it from couldn't really take care of it and so it's, uh, it's suffered. There's quite a lot of dieback in here as you can uh, you can see a lot of this stuff is just uh, completely dried out and dead. I haven't pruned through it yet. But also you can see at the top here, this great big shoot grew last year. So it's not exactly weak, but it's not exactly fighting fit and healthy. So what I'm going to do with this tree today is basically deal with these roots. I kept it well watered all summer and I've been feeding it uh, profusely. Uh, both onto the rock and onto this little bit of soil and along these edges all summer it kept pushing out white root ends but obviously because there was no soil they didn't grow so rather than try and uh, take this all apart what I'm going to do is put this into a pot temporarily uh, take it we're going to take the slab away and then we're going to give it two or three years to uh, to really to really grow so I'm not going to be styling or transforming this tree today it's the first day really in the restoration of this tree and anybody who's followed uh, my videos for any amount of time knows that uh, I'm really not keen on working on trees that aren't particularly healthy now while this one's not unhealthy it's certainly not fighting fit uh, the amount of cones and flowers you can see is indicative of a tree that's not growing particularly well but all over the tree you can see these little shoots which grew last summer and you can see there there's at the length of my finger that's uh, that's all last summer's growth so it's doing okay in the fertilizer and the careful uh, management of it has uh, actually begun to restore it already you can see here reasonably good strong growth which considering the tree has no soil and most of the roots are inside the rock I think it's quite impressive I've never seen anything quite like this and so I really was quite keen to uh, rise to the challenge of creating something interesting from this. In comparison with some parts of the world, bonsai is a relatively new phenomenon in the UK. Well, there was some bonsai around in the 1950s and probably before that. There are very, very few trees uh, from that period that uh, we have to be able to use and work on. So a tree like this is uh, really quite unusual in this country in as much as it's been somewhere in the region of 40, 45 years that uh, this has been growing and developing. So all of these roots have all grown on this tree. This has just been sitting here since these were two little tiny uh, seedlings the sides of a pencil. <clears throat> and it's a real privilege to have something, uh, something like this. And while there are lots of mistakes that were made in this tree that have now caused in a few problems, there's nothing here that we can't fix. But for me to have a tree with this type of history, that is entirely grown in this country is really quite uh, quite special and that's why I've sort of uh, hung on to this and why I intend to uh, do my utmost to uh, restore it. Now I'm sure the previous owner had uh, ideas as to where the front would go and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm not really interested in that at the moment because as I say we're not, uh, not styling this tree but you just have a close look at this. The way these roots have actually 
grown over this rock and grown into this rock. It's not as though this tree was put into the ground and this all of this was all done uh, in the way that trees are these days commercially. This has all happened right where you see it, right on this piece of stone, this piece of rock and this tiny amount of soil. I assume there was some more soil at one point, but not for a very long time. Uh, so trees like this are few and far between for us, unfortunately, but uh, to have this one here to me is a great thrill and uh, so I'm uh, quite happy to spend the next few years working on this and restoring it. So looking at the other side of this tree you can see still more exposed roots, some coming down into the soil nicely, roots along there where the soil's been eroded over the years. This amazing piece of all these roots just literally disappear into this rock. Tuf is very soft and so roots can get in there and break that open. So there's a lot going on inside there what we can't see but uh, that's not a problem. Now coming up here you can see these lower branches looking fairly, uh, fairly strong, fairly fit. I've let it sprout so that way I know uh, what's alive and what's dead because I'm going to clean this up after we've got it potted. Coming up this main trunk, you can see here, we've got these initial branches and then we've lost a lot of branches over the years here. And unfortunately, where they haven't been pruned correctly, uh, just little stubs have been left as you can see here. What happens with the larch, because they're very thick bark, they quickly start to swell and start to cover those cuts. And so we end up with these big lumps and knuckles. There's a two here that are particularly bad. But because it's larch, we can, we're gonna be able to trim a lot of that out and that will reheal, and we should be able to solve a lot of those problems. Now obviously there are no, no branches on this bigger trunk from here right to the top and all the way down to here, but they're large, they're flexible, we've got lots of other branches and secondary and side branches that come the styling we're going to be able to deal with. Like I can say with these old trees they have uh, a few scars from former battles and uh, Perhaps a little neglect here and there. So underneath this rock somebody has uh, cemented this down. It's not wired to the slab so we're going to just give this a little uh, a little assistance in letting go. Tufa rock is very soft so we don't want to uh, take liberties with this because we don't want to break big lumps out of it but uh, we've got underneath that that's starting to move some of that rock's starting to crack up but that's okay At the end of the day this has to come off here and so we're going to have to deal with what we get. And there he goes. First time in 40 years that that's been off that rock. So less that stone slab, I'm already beginning to think this is looking better. We take a little peek underneath here. You can see absolutely solid root as you would expect. Every year this is just making a new layer of root, one on another on another. So if you look at this, there's very little there. Now looking closely, you can see here this different coloured stuff. That's clay. Nowadays we use Keto, but back in the day you wouldn't have been able to get Keto here, so uh, that's just clay which has washed away over the years. And you can see looking closely at this, a lot of this is uh, just dead material now. Obviously the temptation is to start raking this out and getting that all cleaned out so we can get some good soil in there and get some new root development. But you have to bear in mind that this little tiny piece of soil, and you can see there's not much there the size of my hand, temptation is to start cleaning that out but there's a lot of root going on here this is a very dynamic little root system and it's kept this tree alive for uh, absolute decades and so what I'm going to do is 
at this time is just literally lift this into a pot and put new soil around it because as I said it's been pushing new roots out of the edges all summer uh, whenever there was any uh, any dampness around it was just chucking new roots out of everywhere uh, but they had nowhere to go so with a tree like this that's relatively weak we're just going to keep it as it is get it going and then at the next repot perhaps we could look at doing something a little bit uh, a little bit more drastic with this but uh, to rake it out now is going to be uh, not particularly wise and it won't really Im improve the results of what we're doing today so here we have our pot just put a couple of wire holes in it and now we just need to deal with these it seems strange to me that a lot of people seem to have trouble uh, fixing these bits of uh, mesh over these drainage holes we have in bonsai pots. So I just sure I'd show you how uh, I do it because what we don't want to do is just wire that loosely and then while we're working the soil in and moving things around this moves and all the soil disappears down the hole. So we want that to stay put. So the way I do it is to basically take a piece of wire uh, and we want to make a little staple out of that. So we just fold that over thus and hold that there nice little 90 degree leg on there and you see that's going to sit in there so then we just offer that up got the other side there bend that over flip that down straighten that up offer that up to the hole grab it there bend the leg around we want to get these corners nice and straight so it sits and it's going to hold that real nice pop that in there pop that in there push that down fold the legs underneath and you can see that's not going anywhere that's abs that's absolutely going to going to stay there and it's going to keep the soil in place so a real quick easy simple way to wire mesh over the holes of a pot the temptation when repotting a tree like this for help is to use uh, a very free draining mix because generally that will give you the best root development. The problem you have in a situation like this is that obviously we're not going to be raking out the soil that's on the tree as I explained previously. So if we use an overly free draining soil mix what we're going to get is a problem in the summer where the free draining mix may be too dry and the old root will be too wet. So what I'm using here is our number one soil mix, which is quite a fine and fibrous material that holds a great deal of water. Particularly useful for larch because they do like uh, lots of water, especially in the summer, and you have to bear in mind that this is still a relatively big tree. So by using this fine soil mix, I'm going to be able to manage this over the summer much easily, much more, much more easily, and so it's going to uh, be much more successful. So obviously because this has come off a rock we know that's nice and flat underneath so we've got three quarters of an inch of soil there a uh, nice bed for that to sit on so now all I've got to do is drop the tree into it okay so now the tree is where I want it you can see it's moving a little bit so what I want to do is just lift that very slightly and just push that soil underneath there so that's going to support that all the way around obviously we want that to bend down nicely against that soil we don't want to leave air gaps and what have you so that's nicely bedded in there we just run this uh, securing wire over the old root ball and thread that underneath the uh, the roots that are on top of the soil so we're not going to leave any uh, wire marks on the roots if it tightens up. Pull that through. Take the other end. Twist that. Now the secret to tightening this up is to pull and then twist. It won't tighten up if you just keep twisting. So you have to pull and then twist. And that pulls that down there nice and tightly once we get some soil in there again we just want to pack that in 
So it's a very fine grained soil mix, but it doesn't matter how hard you compress this, it still remains, remains loose. So you can press and pack this in as hard as you like, because obviously we don't want uh, any voids in there. If we leave empty spaces underneath, it's just areas of the pot that the tree's not going to be able to grow in. And the whole point of all of this is to give this tree a little more soil so it can develop some uh, some new roots finally after all these uh, after all these years. So now we've got this largely filled up. I'm going to go through and pack re, uh, pack all this in nice and tight. If we had a free draining mix and raked out roots, we could use uh, the pointy end of a stick, but because we haven't, using this flat end, and that enables me to push that soil right underneath that flat root ball, get that all in there really nice and uh, really nice and tightly packed. Special tool. So there I've finished profiling that soil and as you can see I've left the top of this original root ball open to the air because that will allow it to uh, dry out. I don't want it getting too wet and waterlogged so that will allow it to dry to the air which will help me to manage and monitor, uh, sort of, uh, manage this much more easily over the, uh, over the summer. And that soil is all nicely, uh, nicely packed in there. So now, because the soil's raised a little bit, if we were to water this, it'll just wash away because the soil is loose. So now what I need to do is get some moss to place onto this. So that'll hold all the soil together and eventually the tree roots will grow into the moss and it will knit it all together. And it should establish quite nicely. So when it comes to mossing a tree like this, we want moss that's grown on a hard surface. So what I've got here uh, is some moss that was growing on uh, the concrete pavement on an industrial estate. I'm sure they were quite pleased I was cleaning up the mess for them. And so you can see that's nice and thin and it's the right sort of moss for growing in this sort of environment. So I've got some fairly big pieces. So all I'm gonna do is just basically lay that, press that in, take any weeds as we go. that is going to keep all that soil in place, keep the moisture in and help that to uh, help all that lovely new root to uh, regenerate very quickly. One of the issues with bonsai soil, particularly free draining soil mix, is that the surface tends to be to get very dry in the summer and so you tend to find the pots only living in a small amount of the soil because if the top 10-15 uh, mil is bone dry there's not going to be a lot of root going on in there. But by putting moss onto the soil surface it keeps the moisture in the soil right at the surface and that means that uh, roots are free to generate throughout the soil mix rather than just in the lower parts of it. And as you can see once you've got the right moss this sort of thing no problem at all. Obviously I'm going to have to cover it up with something to keep the birds off. Just give that a firm press in. That will stay there and hold all that to uh, hold all that together nicely. So that's the repotting of this larch finished. Not exactly a taxing job but important as I said we've really got to restore the health of this and as you can see settled into this pot quite nicely and you can still see here the top of the original root ball like I say this is important because I'm going to need that to dry out something we'll be able to deal with at the next repot but for now leaving this like this this is going to work really well I just love these roots the way they grow into this rock they go in there and then come out the bottom just amazing is very soft it's amazing it hasn't fallen apart 
Like I say, we haven't actually touched the roots on this at all in any way, shape or form. So the fact that this is already growing and covered in green is absolutely fine. But then I would repot larch up to this stage anyway, even if I was doing a full root clean. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really interested in the style of this tree at the moment. All I'm interested in is the health. Uh, not particularly interested in a front or anything else. We've just got to get this fighting fit and then we can start to look at the design at a later date. So we've got weird roots on both sides, as you can see. But it just sits in there, sits in this pot lovely. And it's got about 10 times more soil than it had originally. So we can be confident this is going to absolutely grow like a weed, this uh, this summer. I need to get a higher background. There you go. Anyway. So now, just give this a water. And then I'm just going to go through it, prune all the dead material out, and then straight back outside on the bench. And perhaps we'll have a look at this at the end of the year again. We'll just see how it goes. Anyway, hopefully that's given you an idea and introduce you to this amazing amazing looking old tree I'm just so thrilled to have this in my uh, in my collection I'm really looking forward to building something uh, something a bit unusual and a bit special from it Thank you.